Krishna Sharan, Ram Krishna Sharan, Ram Krishna Sharan,
प्रकाश तपकथामृत तप्त जीवन कविभिरीड़ कलमशापह श्रवणमंगल श्रीमदात भुवि गृहती नेक्चर ऑफ द वर्ड्स ऑफ द लाइफ फॉर दोज वर इज कॉर्स बाय द वर्ड the words which have been uttered by the nurse of truth which i pouch since the very hearing of which is beneficial which are beautiful pleasing to the ears pleasing to the hearts <coughs> which are satisfying those who recount them on this earth are the givers of plenty om shanti 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 peace 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 be with you This is our first satsang of this summer season here in Kali Mandir. We started a series of talk based on the stories of the old monks of the Ramakrishna order. i wrote and compiled two volumes prachin sadhu der katha stories of the old monks of the ramakrishna order there are many things are not in the books shomi bibikarunda had a desire to preserve sri ram krishna's teachings to each disciple but it was not done so i collected the reminiscences and it came in several volumes then these two volumes are coming from my diaries my interviews from the tapes and some magazines and other sources these monks are the second generation monks ram krishna is our source he is the avatar of this age then he trained his own disciples 16 
and the Jabuchis, of course. So we have not seen the Ramakrishna, we have not seen the first generation monks, the disciples of Ramakrishna. But we met the second generation monks, those who were trained by the disciples of direct disciples. You see, in spiritual life, training is very, very important. Training. If you ask some musicians, who is your guru? First they will ask you. Oh, I'm, my guru is Ravi Shankar. Then you must be great, you see. They always try to locate the source. Training. So we have not seen the second first generation, but we met second generation who were the disciples of Vivekananda, Brahmananda, Shivananda, Sharadananda, Holy Mother. And what they saw and what they have heard, they told us. I collected only little. If other senior monks would collect, but they would get more, more, more. But I thought that, you know, we, before I die, if I do not preserve these things which I have, they will be lost. Nobody will take care of it. That is the reason I sent that 825 pages manuscript to Udbodhan to publish it in two volumes. Second generation of monks. We are the third generation. As I, I came in contact with the Ramakrishna monks from 1950, I was 14 years old. And I learned many, many things from them. But you see, history never stops. History always moves on in a waveform. Sometimes it goes down, sometimes goes up. History. History is just like a golden boat. Too many people cannot be accommodated there. The masses, the kings, queens, the, the rich people, they will not get there. The people will be accommodated in the pages of history who have contributed to humanity, who sacrificed most. Their names we find in the pages of history. So the monks, I, I tried to write in their memoirs are very, very important to me because they are great monks of the Ramakrishna order. And another thing, we, now, we always observe worshipping the character. If you read Emerson's character, the essay, in every country, in every race, they worship character. Shuritra Puja. Those characters manifest the, their great achievements, their actions, their thoughts, their contributions. Character. As Swami Vivekananda said, what is character? Whatever we do, whatever we think, they leave some impressions in the mind. Those impressions form habit. And the habit forms character. That is the way it works. If you think good, 80 good thoughts, 80 good actions every day, month after month, year after year, your character is bound to be good. Character. 
I, some years ago, I read a book called Gulistan by Sadi, the famous Persian poet and philosopher. One of his friends came to see him. It was 21st April 1258. And he was picking up some roses from Sadi's garden. Sadi asked him, what are you doing? I'm picking some flowers for my home. Sadi told him, the fragrance and the beauty of that flower, those flowers will stay only a few days, and then it will fade. But I shall make a flower garden and produce some flowers which will never fade. Those flowers will be immortal. From then on, he started to write poems and stories of morality and ethics, various stories about life, and came in a book form called Gulistan. In Persian language, Gulistan means the rose garden. The flowers of this garden will never fade. It will always remain fresh. So they are eternal truths. Truths never make, never becomes old. Truth always remains fresh. Two thousand years ago, Jesus said, Blessed are the pure in heart, for they shall see God. It is the gospel truth. That sentence will never be old. It will remain always fresh. Tradition is very, very important. It is not easy to start a tradition, but it is extremely difficult to hold the tradition. Tradition is also a proof of the truth. In Sanskrit, it is called Uitijjo Praman. The Puranikas believes eight kinds of evidences. Anyhow, I shall not go there. I shall not enter there. <laughs> Some people think that what is the necessity of knowing and thinking about the past old things? Bury them. Learn something always new. Go move forward. Swamiji gave a lecture at Lahore in 1897. Name of the lecture was Common Basis of Hinduism. There he mentioned how important it is to know our past, our glory. To me, Sri Ramakrishna is just like snow clad mountain. Snow, it has no motion. His disciples are the melted snow, forms the river. Those we have seen, Gangotri, Jamunotri, in the high Himalayas, I have seen perpetual snow range. The snow never melts. That melted snow flows Ganges 600 miles. If you see the Indo Gangetic plain, the civilization developed. All great civilizations are developed on the bank of the rivers. Chinese civilization, Yan Sikyang and Huang Ho. Those are the two biggest, largest, longest rivers in China. Egypt, the Nile. Asia Minor, Tigris and Euphrates. Indian civilization, Sindhu, Ganga and Brahmaputra. These three rivers. It is really amazing. Why there is water? There is human beings. There is civilization. Rivers are very, very important. Swamiji made a remark that what are the spiritual treasures I collected, I left it here, please preserve it. Fifth, six generations are coming. They will use these spiritual treasures and just spread. Swamiji made a forecast about it. 
So we are the third generation, fifth, sixth generation are coming. They will spread. So tonight I shall start with my meetings with the Muslim monks in Banaras. Kashi. Banaras. There is a saying, as long as there is Kashi, nobody can shake Hinduism. Vishwanath and Annapurna are the presiding deities of Banaras. And they have belief, the Hindus, that if you die in Banaras, you will get liberation. Mukti Khetra. I remember in 1970, I asked one Swami, Swami Prabhananda, well, Maharaj, do you believe that if a person dies in Banaras, will get liberation? He scolded me right and left. <laughs> we old fellows, we are staying here with that belief, and you, you are a young man, you have come to shake our faith. <laughs> we old folks are just staying here to die, and you have come here to shake our belief. Then I said, Maharaj, Please forgive me. I am just studying Vedanta. Vedanta says, Jnanat Moksha. Liberation comes only through knowledge of Brahman. And knowledge of Brahman does not come until and unless you are completely free from desires. So, I do not know, Maharaj, what is the truth? If these human beings, they have so many desires, how can they be liberated? Then he said, well, Chaitananda, you are right and I am right. Angela both cannot be right, Maharaj. <laughs> then he said, you know, at the final moment, Shiva gives the liberation. You will not have to worry for us, we will be fine. <laughs> I remember before I joined in 1959, I was in Banaras. <coughs> A disciple of Holy Mother was my guide, Hori Premanando. Maharaj used to, Holy Mother used to say, Hori is one of my daughters. <laughs> Hori and Baroda. These are the two young boys in their early teens, their mother's disciples. So the moment I, I went to the monastery, The Swami asked me, hello, young man, uncle, and yes, Maharaj. Be, whenever you go any place, you must first know two things. First, where is the bathroom and where is the drinking water? <laughs> Very practical. Very practical. Where is the bathroom and where is the drinking water? Then Swami took me to Vishwanath. As you know, Vishwanath is not an easy place to go. You just stand there. You will be pushed in, pushed out. <laughs> and just when hurriedly touch Vishwanath, put some flowers and water, then out. Then Swami taught me you see, whatever you saw momentarily in that place, that you will have to think. Now you sit outside the temple, there is a marble bench, sit here, now repeat mantra and meditate, and think whatever you have seen, Lord Vishnu. In this time last August, I was in Banaras, the monks took me there at four o'clock in the morning. I had nice darshan. And this time I touched Mother Annapurna also. Anyhow, I learned that whenever you go in the temple, even if you come to the Kali Mandir, no monks, no usha, nothing of this, just sit and at least 10-15 minutes sit in front of the mother. 
Then you talk on other business with others. Whenever you, whenever you go in the temple, that I learned from that monk. I went to see Pushupatinath in Nepal with Bhuteshanandaji. We are VIPs. The, the Maharaja's private secretary sent car and the guide for us, vice president of the Ramakrishna Order. We had Maharaj, we did the puja. I saw Sai Bhuteshanandaji sat outside on his steps, covering his chadar, repeating the mantra. Whenever you go, I ask the Jabutis in Belurma, Dakshineshwar, wherever you go. 10 15 minutes, first you must be with the Lord. Then you do your business, meet others. How we learn? This is the way we learn. Then do you know what? When you come home, you will feel that you have some <coughs> deep impressions in your mind. <coughs> I always love to hear something new. I am a lover of new. And I want to learn something new. I want to think about something new. Do you know what that mean? Then your life will remain fresh. Tantin, Josephine MacLeod told about Vivekananda. Swamiji, you think Swamiji was a great teacher. But I see Swamiji was a great learner. He continuously learned. As a result, his teachings are very fresh. See, they are going all right. Okay. So whatever I could collect, I put it, you know, I shall tell some stories. Swami Achalananda, I met, did not meet him. He was a disciple of Swami Jai in 1959. So one Swami, Bashu, Bamadevananda, asked him that you are close to the disciples of Sri Ramakrishna. I am writing the biographies of those Swamis. I do not have much materials about Swami Niranjanananda and Advaitananda. Please supply some materials for me. And Swami sends those materials. I saw in Belurum Advaita Ashram archives. I copied it in my diary. I wrote it here. So, that if you read that God lived with them, I translated those information. That how Swami Advaita Ananda and Swami Niranjana Ananda, you know about their lives and their very beautiful teachings. I am not going to translate those things, but anyhow, they are wonderful things. Then I met Swami Bhaswarananda, Buddha Maharaj. I met him first in 1961. He was a trustee of the Ramakrishna Mission. His body complexion, he was so... I have never seen a human being such such beautiful body complexion. Just milk and vermilion, if you mix it, red and extremely white. That kind of body color. No American body have that kind of color, I see. And her teeth sparkle like a, like, like a sterling silver, even in old days. And so simple. So there is a saying, suppose he was the head of the Ramakrishna Mission Hospital. Suppose this monk complained against this monk to him. Then Shami, Pashadaranadaji will call this monk, hey, this monk told you this thing about, about you to me. So they knew that it is useless to complain against anybody <laughs> to him because he will be exposed. <laughs> hey, that monk told you about this thing to you. So nobody complains to him. <laughs> it was so funny. But the Buddha Maharaj cannot keep anything in his stomach. It all comes out. Very simple. <laughs> he was the in charge of 
Ramakrishna Mission in afternoon in, in Singapore during the Second World War. The Japanese people are trying to invade India. At that time, Nitaji Shubhas Chandra Bose used to come to Ramakrishna Mission for practice, for meditation. And he was very close to the Swami and helped Swami financially to build something. Anyhow, his reminiscences, I put here, it is a long reminiscences that Shunane Netaji, Netaji Shubhas Chandra Bose was a great, great leader of the Frija movement, was in Congress. Anyhow, so one thing he said, Netaji wanted 18 beads of rosary. So he sent his attendant. He went there. His attendant told me. The Ramakrishna Mission gave him 54 beads of rosary. Then Swami Netaji said, I wanted 108, not 54. They do not have a 108. But you can repeat twice, then it will be 108. <laughs> that story is so beautiful. Another leader told, please forget religion. Now just liberate India, freedom, that we want. Swami said, we cannot do that. But we can do, we can help you, we can serve the people. That we can do. Ombika Dam, Banaras, 3rd October, 1977. I have a tape recorder, so I recorded the Swami. And when he said, you know, Sometimes Swami Brahmananda used to make fun and joke, Swami Bhikkhananda said. But if I try to just say something about it, or the Maharaj is making fun out of me, if I say something, he will be very grave. He will withdraw himself. He loves me so much that I cannot bear that kind of... So I, I laugh and I forbear. I know he is, he is bringing his mind from the higher plane to the lower plane, making all these jokes. You know how these disciples, they have mutual understanding and love. Swami Ramakrishnananda once said that. Swami Ramakrishnananda and Swami Vishuddha on the one side and Swami Brahmananda and his Achenya on the another side. They are playing cards and Maharaj was winning, continuously <coughs> winning. So Shai Vishuddhananda was telling Ramakrishna Nanda, Maharaj, we are losing all this. Why don't you not put a trump card? Then Maharaj, you money willingly, money intentionally they are losing to make Maharaj happy, you know. <laughs> 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 then do you know what happened? Then when in privately Shami Ramakrishna Nanda said to Shami Vishuddhananda, You foolish! Don't you know who is this? He's a spiritual son of Sri Ramakrishna. He's inside, outside, only Ramakrishna is working. He is playing cards, it is just show. He's a noir of Brahman. He is bringing his mind down with this play of privileges, all these little, little things. I know how to win, but I want him to happen, be happy so that he will win. And then he is happy. You know, how this Disciples, they have interpersonal relationship, wonderful. Then he says, Swami Bhikyananda, another Nwara Brahman, Gupta Brahma Gyani, he knew Nwara Brahman. He used to come to Belunmat, he was an engineer. He used to supervise the construction of Vivekananda's temple, which was dedicated in 1924. So whenever the Ramakrishna mission could collect a little money, they used to spend it for construction, anyhow. So he used to come from Allahabad to supervise the construction. He used to sit on a chair and see the animations and the, all the people working. 
He told them, each this temple belongs to Lord Shiva, be careful. Construction should be right. And, and he was a big eater. <laughs> when I gave two pieces of toast, and he was Shami Buddha Maharaj was his attendant. So he gave a, one cup of tea and two pieces of toast. So Shami Brahman on the side. Ha! That food is nothing for him. <laughs> <laughs> Go to my room. There are some fruits and some sweets, shandesh, rasagulla, all the fancy foods that they are give to him. He loves to eat. <laughs> oh, his stories are amazing stories of Bigyan Maharaj. One night, they are taking dinner. Somebody brought 32 dal puri, a thick inside dal, lentil, and some puri. Then he told the other monks there in the dining hall, you know, this you, tomorrow this will be not today, um, but I shall eat today, because you know, I'm an old man, I do not know whether I shall live. <laughs> <laughs> Who knows, perhaps I may die tonight. So my portion I shall eat. For you it will be for tomorrow, you know. <laughs> so he yet I think, 10 or 12 or 15 <laughs> Then the next morning, these monks are waiting and thinking that they will get dal puri. Then he says, Maharaj, where is the dal puri? Oh, do you think I kept it for you? At midnight, I got up and I finished all. <laughs> you know, I'm an old man. I shall may not live long, but you boys will live long, you will get more dalpuris in the future. <laughs> so funny. <laughs> now all of a sudden some big and Maharaj came, Ramgoti Maharaj, yes. I knew him, Bishwabandhu. Maharaj, there is a very, the, he will not keep any guest in his place, you know. The moment you come, oh, when are you leaving? <laughs> then he will say, Maharaj, there is a very bad reputation about you, what? You, well, you are very miserly and you do not feed people, you do not allow people to come to the ashrama. Is that so? So many bad reputation about me, but yes. All right, brother, you stay. And he brought all good food to him and said, and then <laughs> next day when he was leaving, he said, you know, let other people say, you do not criticize me, please. <laughs> 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 that I am a miserly person. <laughs> you see, they are all <laughs> different kinds of people. <laughs> Mahapurush Maharaj used to sit on the courtyard under the mango tree in Belunbad and watch. At that time, new temple was not there, old temple. Shine. He was watch that whether monks are going to the Vesper service or not. He used to watch. Ma I'm saying, Maharaj, when you are initiated, Showing Brahman that gave you spiritual instructions. Tell me what instruction you got. Maharaj told me, practice two things. Then you will not have to practice any other spiritual disciplines. Truthfulness and Brahmacharya. Truthfulness and celibacy. If you practice these two, that's enough for you. Well, we had another Swami, Petapudi. He said, he lost his brain, I mean, he became crazy, mad. <laughs> and then sometimes he was other people, when you become very rough there to sometimes force him to make him control, just to sometimes hit him, to make him under control. <coughs> then he says, you people sing Mama Dema Pagol Kore, Akonami Pagolo Esi, Ekonera Amke Martyashi. You people sing Omadar, make me mad. 
Now I have become mad and you people come to beat me. Huh? <laughs> what kind of song you sing? <laughs> well, one day I forgot to light the lamp in Swamiji's room. Mahapurush Maharaj saw it and said, What is the matter? Never do it again, otherwise I shall send you back home. They are very, very strict about those things. Then Swami Aputbhananda, who was Mother's disciple, <coughs> he actually, he is the compiler of that book. For Seekers of God. That is one of the best books, you know, I tell you frankly. And he wrote many, many books. He was very fond of me. 28th August 1982, Banaras, Ashrama. Whenever I used to go, he used to ask me to give a talk, to share my ideas with the monks. He's so senior. He told me that Sri Ramakrishna gave holy mothers four Siddha mantras and the mother gave those teachings to, told to Swami Virajananda and now Ramakrishna ordered those mantras are coming traditionally that he told me. But the Mahapurush Maharaj used to see Sri Ramakrishna every day. One day he told Swami Brahmananda that Raja, if I would not see the master every day, I would not leave. One day, Mahapurush Maharaj, he was Mahapurush Maharaj's attendant. When he was supporting my shoulder, Mahapurush Maharaj said, This body is illumined, free. Those who will see this body will be free. It was in 1912. Holy Mother was in Banaras. Swami Brahmananda, Shivananda, Turiyananda, Advutananda were in Banaras. So Latu Maharaj was very moody. Ah, I do not care for Mother. He would do, Latu Maharaj never stayed in the ashrama. No ashrama can manage him. Why? Nobody knows his whole life he will meditate. Nobody knows when he will eat. He will have to keep food outside his room and cover it. Nobody knows when he will eat. No routine, nothing of the sort. So he, some of his devotees used to take care of him. So one day Lachumar said, sometimes he used to talk like this. Then he would say, told his attendants, I shall go to see Vishwanath today, Shiva. Then when he came on the street, I first I want to go and see the mother. So he came to see Holy Mother. He entered, believe, his body was shaking and crying. He fell at the mother's feet and mother was caressing his, rubbing his head and gave him prasad. But uh, believe his devotion for the mother is phenomenal. Then he told another story that is a beautiful story. I wrote in this story in the Holy Mother's biography. Mother installed Thakur and her picture in Kualpara. Ashram. And her own picture he installed in Banaras. In Banaras Advaita Ashrama, here is the marvelous statue of Sri Ramakrishna, left side in a niche, Vivekananda with an itinerant monk picture is there, and the right side a picture of Holy Mother. 
mother brought that picture, I think, carried from Calcutta, under a cloth, she entered the shrine, in the shrine, and asked the monks, and then he closed, he, she closed the door of the temple. She stayed inside for some time, then when she came out, she told Chandra Maharaj, Nirbharananda, he was the head Swami there. Chandra, every day put a couple of flowers to this picture, her picture. So Chandra Maharaj went to this temple and found that mother's picture was there. Previously no picture was, no mother's picture there. So Chandra Maharaj said, yes mother, we shall do that, we shall put flowers there. Then Chandra Maharaj told Mahapurush Maharaj. Mahapurush Maharaj ran to the temple and saw mother's picture was there. Then Mahapurush Maharaj ran to Swami Brahmananda. Maharaj, mother installed her own picture and put flowers there. Then Maharaj became very grave. Tarogda, very bad woman. Mother is planning to leave us soon. Then Swami Turiyananda said, it is not in our hands, it is the Divine Mother's wish, whatever she will do, that is our will. That story, Swami, Apurvananda told me, and he recorded it. He heard from Swami Shantananda and Shivananda also. Then I met another Swami, Swaprakashananda, Tapasi Shuren Maharaj. In Banaras, we have a word, number 10. All old, retired monks live there. You see, now Ramakrishna Mission, we have three centers for the retired monks. One in Belurmat, one in Banaras, and one in Alsur, near Bangalore. There all the old retired monks live there. See? So this Swami was, at that time, a number 10 word was there. So I asked some question. Well, Swami Brahmananda told me, job ko reja. Repeat mantra. Then I asked, how can I get the taste of the mantra? Well, it's through practice. Once you have attachment for your ishto, love for ishto, japam and meditation become very easy. Then he said, I may not repeat mantra, but I have all the time they are in my mind. I have constant sharan manan. I have constant recollectedness of the disciples and the mother. You know, when you do start the, your car, what do you do? You press the accelerator hard in the very beginning. The moment car started to move, the wheels are run, moving fast. At that time, you only touch very gently. So in the very beginning, you give the pressure, press it. The moment car starts, the engine is on, car starts to move, the wheels turns around very rapidly, then only just touch it and hold. Or you can put it, what is called the... Uh, uh, just automatically, you, just, you will not have to touch it, just hold on. 70 degrees, 70 miles per speed. Put it there, automatic control, you know. Cruise control. Cruise control. Cruise control. <laughs> cruise control. Put cruise control, I saw that when I come from Kansas City to St. Louis, 70 miles speed. Now they will cruise control and they hold the thing, just staring and just... They do not touch all the time. Okay. When you change, change the lane, at that time you will have to charge. So, so same thing in meditation also, japam, it becomes automatically, it goes on, even in sleep state.
Then he said, you know, one day I, he joined in Hardwar, Kankal. But one day I went for a walk with Swami Turiyananda. Turiyananda, you probably have seen in some cities and by the side in the confectioners, sometimes they fry jilipi in front of the shop. So here is a big cauldron, all the hot oil, and here is another cauldron for syrup. So, so with the batter, they make the jilipi, then put it there, then drop it into, into the syrup. So Turiyananda shouted, Hey, Shuren, jilipi is our ideal. Jilipi is our ideal. The jilipi is our ideal, yes. Ganamishra bhakti. Fry with knowledge and soak into devotion. Fry in knowledge, <laughs> soak into devotion. That is our goal. That Sri Ramakrishna taught. Gyano, Mishra, Bhakti. Bhakti, devotion, tempered with knowledge. Otherwise, only knowledge will be dry. Only devotion will be swami. <laughs> <laughs> we need crispy, sweet. <laughs> that is our goal. Well, that is Sri Ramakrishna. That he told me. Sometimes this, when I have a letter, this Swami wrote Swami Pavitrananda and described how Swami Brahmanda initiated him and instructed him in how to meditate on the Ishta, in the heart. He mentioned all those things in his, in, in this letter. Well, when you repeat the mantra in the heart, try to think about the illumined form of your chosen deity. Well, Maharaj was a very grieve and very serious person, but sometimes he was so many jolly and making fun and jokes less like children. I was initiated with Swami Prabhupada Ashokananda into Sannyas in nineteen twenty one in in Madras. Then you see Swami Turiyananda used to explain to us Bibiko Churamani, crazy jewel of discrimination. And his exposition was so inspiring. But we, he would lift our minds in a higher plane of consciousness. Christian of Discrimination is a very good book on Vedanta by Shankara. I saw Udbodhan, I saw Holy Mother once in Udbodhan but I never got any chance to talk to him or well, one day I went to <clears throat> bow down to Shami Shivan and the Mahapurush Maharaj. Maharaj said, did you go and bow down to Swamiji first in his room? No. First bow down to Swamiji, then come to me. Well, sometimes we used to go to take bath. I used to go take bath in the Brahma Kund and take a little water and give to Shami, Shami Turiyananda and he would just sprinkle on his head. But the Mother Ganges has a purifying power. The whole secret of spiritual life is Abhash. Nitto Niyomito Dhanja. Daily, regularly, timely, practice japa and meditation. That will bring joy and peace. You know, I was talking I mean, with some people in England also. Actually, you know, three months. Just three months. Morning one hour, evening one hour. 
You read half an hour reading, half an hour meditation. Evening, half an hour reading, half an hour meditation and japa. We just do it three months and see that you will definitely see that a change has come to you. It's those who complain, you know, Shami, <laughs> Shami, yeah. Big Gyanananda Ji used to say, Maharaj, I want initiation. Initiation? I shall initiate, I can give you initiation, but on condition. Do you know what is the condition? You promise that you will never write a letter to me? <laughs> <laughs> At the time there was no phone, you know. <laughs> You promise that you will never write to me, then I shall initiate you. <laughs> He's an aura Brahman. <laughs> Amazing. Amazing these people. <laughs> well, I had a doubt. Dikashma Ishta Mantra I am when I was initiated, I got my Ishta Mantra. But when I have Sannas, when you get Sannas, we have to have four extra mantras. Press Mantra, Brahma Mantra, Paramahamsa Gayatri, Press Mantra. There's, there are four mantras up there. So the Swami was confused. Which one shall I practice? Ishta mantra is the most important thing. That is should go till death. Other mantras are secondary. You see, sometimes people get confused. I remember when I was studying Vedanta, I was confused. Five, six years, four, five years, I was confused. Vedanta says, Brahman, Satchidananda, alone is real. Naam, Rup, name and form are unreal. So Ramakrishna is a name, Ramakrishna is a form, so Ramakrishna is unreal to me. This is Vedanta. Sat, Chit, Ananda, that is Brahman. Naam, Rup, Maya. Naam, Rup, change. But these three never change. So this is the ultimate truth. This is the relative truth. So Nam Rup Mitha. So why should I meditate on Ramakrishna? Ramakrishna is Mitha. It's not real. That my Vedanta study told me. So I was confused. My guru says, Ramakrishna, you are Ishto. This is your mantra. So I had a conflict. I asked many Swamis. They said both are same, both are same, but I do not, that did not convince me. But I got my answer from Sri Ramakrishna. When I was working, working long before that, that Swami Akhanjananda's reminiscences, dear Thaku told him, it is not in the gospel, it is not in the divine play, nowhere else. Dear Thaku said, Jejar Ishto, Shaitar Atma, Atma darshan, Ishto darshan, hack. Jejar Ishto, Shaitar Atma. Your chosen deity and your Atman are the same. If you have the vision of your Ishto, you have the vision of the Atman. And if you have the vision of the Atman, you have the vision of this Ishto. Do yak. Aim had the same problem. The first day, second day, Aim says, What do you think about God? Sir, I believe God without form. All right, but God has form also. <laughs> Aim was confused. How? You see, this is called Aristotelian logic. Western people understand ye, ye, ne, ne. Ye cannot be ne, ne cannot be ye. That is the Western people think. So aim was westernized. He read his Western logic. So how both can be the uh, shakar, nirakar, form and formless, 
how both can be the same? Sri Ramakrishna said, what is wrong? You drink water? Yes. Put that water in the ice box, it becomes solid. Then take the water, put it in a, in a, in a, in a kettle. Heat it, it will be vapor. So water is changing position, don't you think so? Ramakrishna never spoke anything which is irrational. When ice and water are the same thing, only change the position. For the devotees, with ice, with form, to the gani is liquid. That's all. Very convincing answer. That is the way. <laughs> Thakur taught, you know, <laughs> amazing. Again, I asked that Swami. Swami's example is good about dualism, non dualism. When your health is good, say, I am Brahman. <laughs> and when you have a stomachache, say, Oh, Mother, have mercy on me, have mercy on me, have mercy on me. <laughs> Madam, see both ways. Don't get confused. That is practical. <laughs> Sometimes I practice non-dualism, practice dualism. What is wrong? <laughs> Case both. <laughs> um, but I, I had a friend. I got still one friend is there. He does not go to the temple. He does not bow down to Ramakrishna even. He practices I am the Atman. What to do? I, we had a friend, his name was Shotta Bratananda, Monmatha Maharaj. Which I remember, Udbodhan, Shotta Bratananda, Ud Monmatha Maharaj. So he used to practice, I am the Atman. He is a follower of Gaurabhada. So sometimes his mother used to come from, Bhavan, from Bali Ganj. They are very rich people. He bring some food and some sweets and fruits and a lot of things. So the Bhangshu Maharaj was teasing, teasing him. Then go and tell her, Ketumi Nari, who are you, woman? Just go, tell her. <laughs> tell your mother that who are you, woman? Because you said that you are birthless. Ajatavad. <laughs> <laughs> you are practicing, I'm birthless. Now go to your mother and tell, who are you, woman? <laughs> Who used to tease him? <laughs> because he was a very hardcore Advaita Vadi. Very staunch. <laughs> then Swami said, Baba Advaitam Sada Kurjat Kriya Advaitam Nakurichit, Advaitam Trishu Lokeshu, Naddaitam Guru Nasha. All is maintained the non dual feeling that God dwells, Brahman. Such, everything is Brahman. That is the maintenance of the non-dual feeling. Nadvaitam kokono kriyate adhi. But in action, don't practice non-dualism. You will be confused. Everything is Brahman, food is Brahman, and the filth is also is Brahman. That does not mean you will have to eat the filth or garbage. That is also Brahman. You do not go and eat and from the garbage can, from the garbage stuff. So that is, don't practice non-dualism that way. I remember in, in, in Hollywood one monk, I saw he has a shine and his jogging shoes, everything on the, in front of Sri Ramakrishna on the same table. So I told him, hey, what are you doing? Did you put the jogging shoe in front of Sri Ramakrishna on the table? Ha! Oh, he was telling me that you Indians, your religion is in the shoes and all those things he was giving me a sadhana. <laughs> I told him, all right, if we have, he is practicing non-dualism. You see, if we have so much non-dualistic feeling, he was a ritualistic. 
to you take Ramakrishna's pictures and put on the toilet and worship there. Why in the in the year? Oh, it is too much, too much, too much. <laughs> <laughs> Stupid! There is no no common sense. <laughs> Believe, always maintain non-dualism, but don't practice that thing with your guru. That Shanga shows you, Advaitam Trishu Lokeshu, in the three worlds, practice non-dualism. Naddvaitam Guru Nashaho, never say to your guru that even myself are the same. Shankara Kaushanji, guru's position is very high. <laughs> Another thing Swami says, Vivek among Vairagya, discrimination and dispassion. These two things are very, very important in spiritual life. And cultivate devotion. You know, sometimes I ask people, in the spiritual life you really make it tasty. If you want to get some taste, then you will have to connect this, this, this and these three. Karma Yoga, Raja Yoga and Bhakti Yoga. Then you, you will get the taste. Let me tell you, I was talking to some people. If I tell you I love you, I love you, I love you, just mere words. You prove it that you love me through your action. That is Karma Yoga. And Jnana Yoga, really, if you really want to love your chosen deity, you'll have to know his ins and outs. From Monday till Saturday, today I finished one chapter, Sri Ramakrishna Leela Dhan, meditation on Sri Ramakrishna's human Leela, Noro Leela. You see, the infinite God takes a finite human form and live with us. What he did, that, uh, I got 39 pages I wrote in six days. So I was thinking, you know, that I can grasp, I can communicate. The Brahman, I cannot communicate. Thakur, I can communicate. He has a name, he has a form, I read, I see his picture. This came from Kojak camera. I exactly know how he looked like. And I know his teachings. He, I was like yesterday I had a little computer problem, so I asked our George in St. Louis and he came through the Kim Siva Sever and and the Skype, then he fixed it. Then I showed look what I brought from India this time. The scan copies of entire all diaries of him. The whole gospel came from those diaries. So I got all the scan copies. So I put it there. So I was showing George Luke, <laughs> December 1883. I was showing those the scan copies on the, on, the, on, the, on the computer screen so that he can see it from there. So anyhow, he so this is fresh. I'm just telling you how to get the taste. Love and devotion. Thakur gave the example. You have cows and you give the fodder, some grass. The cow will eat. But in that fodder, if you add some oil cakes and some nuts and raisins and very interesting things, you know, then the cow relishes that that thing, you call it job. When it's oil cake and fragrance and all these things, they're a little juicy and a little soaked. Only dry, you know, is, is the jaws will be pain, painful. <laughs> Some make things life interesting. You know, it's for the reason, with a little puja, a little singing, a little reading and meditation and japam, 
And this some I sometimes used to I remember I was in Brazil in nineteen ninety eight. So I was telling you know, some people say that I do not get any joy in his spiritual life. Then I gave told them how to get joy. Well, first time meditation. If it does not work, repeat mantra. If it does not work, read some holy books. If it does not work, go have some holy company. If it does not work, read some karma yoga. If it nothing, if nothing works, well, rent a, go to blockbuster and rent a video. Mrs. Doubtfire. <laughs> Robin William will make you happy. <laughs> Go and see Mrs. Doubtfire. So do you know what happened? Then all people are laughing. So I, I have two interpreters. I tell you, what do, do they know Mr. Doubtfire? Of course, Swami. All Hollywood movies we dub in, 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 in Portuguese language. We know Mrs. Doubtfire. <laughs> make life interesting. Whether you like or don't like, you must sit. Asan sadhu ke bachai. Asan means the seat. Saves a monk's life. Or a spiritual seeker's life. How? Swami Sarudeshananda told it. Asan sadhu vibare shap. Beaver means hole, sharp, sharp means snake. When the snake is outside, you can kill the snake. But if snake is in the hole, the snake knows the zigzag ways to get out. Nobody can kill the snake when it enters the hole. Because hole is, brings a strength to the snake. I am in my home. Nobody can kill me. I know various passages to protect myself. Same thing this asana, the seat. When a spiritual aspirant sits on the seat, he becomes strong. I am connected with God. No maya can, can do any harm to me. You know, if you do not live with these monks and, and the spiritual people, you do not know the secret. All right, up to this tonight. Next Saturday also there will be satsang. Two Saturdays in, and then in August, first Saturday and last Saturday. Middle two Saturdays I shall not be here. But Bajananda will give the classes. Then in September, first two Saturdays I shall be I shall give class. So six times. Two times Northern California took away and uh, two times Portland, Seattle, Vancouver, Calgary will take away. So I shall not be here. Two Saturdays. Bus. It will be interesting. You will get a lot of interesting things.